Hey, what's up? It's Christine Horn and welcome to a Work With Me Wednesday. By the end of this video, you will walk away with six tips on how you can use a virtual assistant to help grow your business or your acting career. Stay tuned. Welcome back. I'm Christine Horn, professional working actress of 20 plus years and a life and career coach for actors just like you. Hey, and you might not even be an actor, but welcome to Work With Me Wednesday, where I share some of the tips and hacks that I use to create a six-figure coaching business. So listen, if you're not subscribed to this channel, go ahead and click the notification button, hit the little bell so that you do not miss a video. There's so much great stuff here. So today I want to teach you how I have been using virtual assistants for gosh, at least six ish or not at least six or seven years to help grow my six figure coaching business. And not just for my business, also for my acting career. So depending on where you're at, you will find this video helpful. Here's what you need to know. If you're new to me, I perform on TV, I perform on Broadway, I'm in feature films. So I'm very busy and that's separate from my full-time coaching business where I coach actors from around the world on how to crush their auditions, book more work and live a life that they love. But here's the thing, there are so many ways you can use virtual assistance to get more done and to grow your business and grow your career. Some of the biggest things I hear is, Christine, I don't have time. How do you do so much? How do you seem to be everywhere at once. Ah, surprise. <laughs> I am kind of because I have help. And listen, it took me years to accept that I cannot do everything. I think I'm superwoman many days, but I had to understand that no, I'm not and I need help. And so virtual assistants can really help to grow your business or your acting career. So I'm going to give you six tips today, six ways that you can use them. But let's back up a little bit. <laughs> that's my, that's my. <laughs> <laughs> That's my impression of reverse music. <laughs> Never mind. You get it. Okay. First of all, let's just talk about what a virtual assistant is. Okay. It's basically a person who can work from anywhere. They do not have to be in your house. They can be, they can work from their own home and help you with anything. Okay. I have hired virtual assistants on a long-term basis. My first real good virtual assistant. Let me say that. She's been with me. She's still with me. She lives in the Philippines and she has been with me for at least five or six years. Um, and she's amazing. And we've never met face to face. I know it's wild, right? So you can do, you can hire someone that's going to be long-term with you, or you can hire virtual assistants, freelancers, you might be calling it a different name for very specific gigs. So I'll talk about that today too, to get your, get the wheels turning. But it's one of those things where you just have to start searching. There are two major websites that I use. Well, no, it's only one now upwork.com upwork.com. I'll put it on the screen and I'll put a link below. That's a good website to use to find freelancers and virtual assistants who you want maybe for an ongoing project. I've had the best luck on that website for people who I wanted to add to my team who would be with me for the, for the long haul. The person who's editing this video right now, shout out to my video editor, right? He, I found him on Upwork. There's another website called Fiverr.com. I'll put my special link there below so we both get a little hookup, okay? Um, that is a website where I like to use for one-off things. And I'll give you some of those ideas in just a second. So those are the two main reputable websites that I use to find virtual assistants. So and this may be a multi-part. This is probably part one because I, this goes pretty deep because I have some horror stories and I have some success stories too about dealing with virtual assistants. So yeah, I think this is going to be part one. <laughs> so let's just start with part one. So let's just dive in. So that's the overview of what a virtual assistant is and two major places where you can find them. So that's kind of a bonus. So what, Christine, okay, what can I do? What can I give? What kind of work can I give a virtual assistant? First thing is research. 
That's one of the main things I started using my virtual assistant for years ago. Before I even had a six-figure business, as an actor, I was working a full-time job and I needed to research. Maybe you're looking to research casting directors, directors, writers, producers, you, you know, going down that IMDb Pro rabbit hole, going, you know, trying to figure out mailing addresses, Instagram, Twitter handles, that kind of stuff that can take hours. You can give instruction to a virtual assistant who's good at research and give them that. And then all you have to do is look at what they, they gave you as final results. Saves you hours. I always say, and hear me, this is the biggest tip I can give you. You either spend time or you spend money. Nothing in between. Got it? Time or money. So you get to decide what you're gonna spend, okay? Tip number two, things you, well, thing you can do, number two is data entry. You can have, if you are needing to have things logged in Excel, an Excel spreadsheet, you can get, get them to do that. Again, if you're starting, maybe you have a side hustle you're trying to build, you're trying to keep contacts organized, trying to create a database, find a virtual assistant to do basic uh, monotonous data entry. My virtual assistant, oh, I love her so much. I, you know, I coach clients from all around the world. And so I will have hundreds of clients at a time in, a, in like, for instance, my Book More TV program. And I need her to put all their names in when, when a sale comes in, put their email address in, create these forms, like all the stuff behind the scenes my students have no idea is happening. My assistant helps me with that. And I'm so grateful because I need to spend my time in my zone of genius, which is marketing, which is teaching, which is acting, right? So data entry. Number three is for my actors out there, you can use a virtual assistant to occasionally update your resume sometimes. So you can teach them, hey, this is how I update my resume on Actors Access, Casting Networks, Casting Frontier, whatever the websites are that you use to house your, your resume and your reels. And you know how it is, you forget to up the update one, oh, you update one and the IMDb's out of date. Get a system. So you could just email the virtual assistant and say, give them the new gig that you did, the name of the show, the role and the director or whatever, email, and then your virtual assistant is just trained to update all the things. So yes, you do have to provide them with your login information. Again, I think I'll have to go into about privacy in another video so we don't take up too much time today, but that's another thing you can do. And now when your team wants you to make sure all your stuff is updated, you won't have to worry. The fourth thing that you can do is for a graphic design. This is when you want to use the website fiber.com that I suggested. Again, Upwork also will have people who do great graphic graphic design, but oftentimes those freelancers want more long-term work. Fiverr people are used to doing one job and they're done. So actor one sheets, social media headers, uh, Instagram flyers, posts, quote cards, all that stuff. You can hire someone off fiverr.com to do that for you. And then all you got to do is just schedule it, upload it, and you're done. Number five is transcription. So let's say you do a video and maybe you, we all hear about we should multi, we should repurpose our content. And this might be more for my business owners out there, but you don't have to do that. You can use different websites. Another website like rev.com, one of my favorites, or temi.com, I'll put the links below. You can use websites like that to uh, transcribe your video so that you can get captions that are correct. And you can also use those captions on your social Social media so that you don't have to hope and trust and hope and pray that maybe YouTube or Facebook puts the captions correctly. That's another way you can use virtual assistant. My last tip for you, number six, is you can use a virtual assistant to send emails for you. Send emails, make phone calls, depends on where in the country they are. Sometimes, you know, when you have someone in the Philippines or in India or Africa somewhere, the time zones might be different. So you have to think about what you need from your virtual assistant. And I think my biggest tip, and this is a bonus tip, don't give them too much at once. Especially if this is someone you want to work with you for a long time. You have to train them up, just like you get trained when you start a new job. Give them one task, let them be great at that, and then move to the next one. And, you know, it's the kind of thing where one of my business coaches told me, make sure you hire experts. So sometimes you don't want to have to, you might find someone who might be cheaper, but it causes you to have to do so much training, which takes up more of your time. And the whole point of this was to, to take the time and to take the stress off of you, right? You're supposed to be getting a helpmate. So you might be wondering, well, how much uh, should I charge? Uh, how much do they charge for virtual assistants? Uh, be sure to come back to part two of this, where I'll talk about rates for virtual assistants, as well as where to find them. Like, 
to find some good ones. And I'm gonna share some of my horror stories and my success stories with you as well, just as a precaution so you know what to look out for and to make sure that you are a good boss. I'll teach you how to do that in part two. See you next time. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss it. I'm gonna start doing a lot of these work with me Wednesdays. I usually do them on Instagram in some way, but I figured YouTube was a better way for me to not just be in my stories for one day, but for me to go deeper and really take you behind the scenes on how I've been building a successful business and how um, you can too. All right, see you next time. Bye.